Welcome to update 42. Ah! Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the Gold Road Chapter PTS Patch Notes Week 1. We are going to be looking at uh, over 40 pages of changes, additions, subtractions, and divisions. So I'm going to skip the intro blurb. We do have, I, I'll not skip it, but like skim it. We have new item sets. I talked about this in a previous video when we were in Amsterdam. We got mythics. We have mounts. We have pets. 22, it was not 20, it was 22 new skill styles. And of course, a new trial coming. Uh, for those of you asking about the PvP update, that's in quarter three. Or is it quarter four? It's quarter four, right? It's quarter four, not quarter three. Excuse me. Quarter four. Not quarter two. This is quarter two. Okay, and for those of you who want the uh, patch notes, it'll be linked in the video description or in the chat if you are here with the live audience. So let's keep going. Uh, Gold Road chapter, we got a zone, the West Weald, a rich Colovian imperial territory ruled by Count Calantius of Skingrad. And of course, it's located just west of Cyrodiil, east of the Gold Coast, uh, remains a stronghold of imperial prosperity, vineyards, lumber camps, strong trade routes. Uh, we got the Gold Road. We got three different biomes, uh, not just you know, uh, autumn-like uh, areas. We've got mirror more incursions. This is the new type of world events. Scribing. Okay. Scribing is going to be kind of their take on the original iteration of spellcrafting. Uh, we talked to the project lead in Amsterdam, Kira. She brought up that, yes, the original spellcrafting presented during the QuakeCon 2014 was an inspiration, partly, but that they had actually begun developing the scribing system back in 2021, I believe, late 2021. So sometime around, uh, same time around the as the Arcanist class, actually. We're very excited to introduce you to scribing, a new system focused around combat, giving you the ability to customize abilities to suit your play style. This powerful new system gives you access to 11 new unique customizable skills, they can make your own. Okay. Go on an exciting adventure with the Mages Guild and learn how to describe your own customizable skills. As you explore the, scholar the Scholarium be beneath Ivea and plumb the secrets of the past, you will earn new skills, new scripts, skill styles, and a wide variety of scribing benefits thanks to some very powerful friends. And I think that's in reference to the uh, three, uh, I guess, animal mascots, I guess. I, it's like the dragon, the griffin... And something else. To get started, seek out Adept Ernard Ernard Rernal near the Mage's Guild in Skingrod. If you have access to the CPU system, or if you have reached level 30 in character. Okay. So I'm gonna go in I'm not gonna put too much uh I'm gonna I'm gonna read everything here because I'm gonna actually go on the PTS today, hopefully, and uh test it for you. What you guys want me to read this part right here? The grimoire. So, to explain this briefly, the Grimoire is like the base uh, skill, I guess you could call it, or the modification of the base skill. And the Focus Script, Signature Script, and Affix Scripts are just like the additional modifiers on top of the Grimoire, which basically gives it the debuffs, buffs, or effects, like fire damage, or physical damage, or minor breach, or uh, it could be a utility thing, like pulling in things, maybe. Or is that, uh, or, or not pulling in things, the uh, inflicting certain debuffs like poison and stuff like that. And we do have a material that we need in order to engage with the scribing system. It's called Luminous Ink. Uh, it, it will drop rarely from defeated enemies. And after completing the quest, the Wing of the Netch, Luminous Ink will rarely drop from harvesting crafting materials. So it looks like we have our answer here, how they want us to attain the materials needed to uh, basically scribe the 4,000 unique combinations of uh, spellcraftable skills uh, or modified modifiable skills. And it looks like they'll drop from just killing things or just harvesting things, which not bad. It could be worse. Place your new scribe skill on your ability bar from the skill menu. Okay. Yeah, I'll actually show you the UI. I really like the UI for scribing and styling. I think it's very straightforward. It's very simple. There's no two ways about it. It's just right there for you to kind of engage with immediately. Um, 
grimoires. There are 11 new grimoires, customizable skills. Weapon skill line, we have the vault for bow, shield throw for one hand and shield, smash for two hand, elemental explosion for destruction staff, mender's bond restoration staff, and we also do have dual traveling knife. Soul magic skill line, uh, soul burst will have its own thing. Is luminous ink tradable? Uh, from what I saw, I'm pretty sure it's a material. So I don't think it's a currency, at least from the playtest build. It could, I could be wrong because that playtest build was old. Maybe they did convert it into currency or maybe it's still like an inventory item. We'll see. Uh, right, let's see. Let's go. Uh, 11 new grimoires. We got that. Scripts. Okay. Enemy targeted or ally or self targeted. Signatures. Mechanics. Passes from the parent skill line. Hawkeye. Affix. And then signature. We're going to kind of skip again. again sk skip past some of this. Ink drops from enemies in the world at a low rate after you've completed the quest. You can also gain via Harvest Nodes. We kind of saw that. So, scribing a skill for the first time, it will always require three scripts and therefore cost three luminous ink. However, if you're changing out only a single script on a previously scribed skill, the luminous ink cost to scribe will only be one. Okay, skill styling. Yeah, so 20, like, like I said, I saw some pretty cool things. Orange slash red meteor. We had a black force pulse, which was, I think, the one of the best looking ones. Uh, trap, I don't recall. Like, it has an effect, but it wasn't working, I guess, on the playtest build. Didn't look purple or anything. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else what, what else I tested in terms of the styling. But they all look really cool. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it, actually. And I feel like there will be ones where it's like, oh, this looks so cool, I'm going to use it anyway. No matter the build. Because <laughs> it just looks that good. At least for me, it's the, it's the Black Force Pulse. It's like a black lightsaber. Okay, so on the outskirts of Fargrip City District, there is an old vault known as the Lucent Citadel. So, yeah, we played this. We only got to the first mini boss uh, in Amsterdam after the first boss kill. So we'll be actually raiding, hopefully soon, in about an hour, if the PTS comes up before then uh, the new trial. Hard moves for each of the boss encounters can be activated in any order to facilitate testing. Right. Okay. All right. Here's the new item sets. Uh, it doesn't, it seems like they may have adjusted a couple values. All right. Overland sets. Symmetry of the wield or light armor set. Spell and weapon damage for the two to four piece bonuses. Uh, the new set, Symmetry of the wield. We got two to four piece bonuses giving spell and weapon damage. And we have the fifth piece bonus offering 200% status effect chance while your health is above 50%. <laughs> Okay, and adds 10% healing done while your health is 50% or less. This looks solid, at least in terms of just the status effect chance. Um, I think that's I think it can be pretty potent, for sure. Yeah, I, I don't know the the text on the internet, right? Ma we got uh, macabre uh, vintage. We have spell and weapon damage from the two to five piece bonus, and the fifth piece extra bonus is also offering. The 150 weapon and spell damage. And we also do have the actual 5 piece bonus where it says when you kill a monster, a monster, not a player, when you're a monster, when you kill a monster, they burst with blood magic, dealing 50% of their max health to enemies with si within 6 meters as bleed damage up to tw 24,096 bleed damage. This damage cannot critically strike. This effect can occur once every half a second. This is a very potent thing for trash. Um, yeah, 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 there's a delay because you might have to refresh. I think this is a very potent thing uh, and definitely something something that I. For the heavy set alien refuge, we have max stamina, max health, max health. Blocking attack reduces your damage taken by 11% for three seconds. For the craftable sets, we have the Highland Sentinel, Tarakir Strike, and Threads of War. You can craft these in any uh, kind of weight, heavy, light, or medium. We have a bunch of critical chance being offered by Highland Sentinel, up to the 4-piece bonus. The 5th-piece bonus gives you, while in combat, each second you stand still, 
grants you a stack of Sentinel's Eye every one second, up to 10 stacks. So you have to stand still for 10 seconds to increase your critical chance by 468 per stack, <laughs> which is crazy. That's 40, that's 4,680 critical chance for just standing still for 10 seconds. Each second you move removes half of your stacks. So they change this a little bit. Wow. Okay. Of Sentinel's Eyes, rounded up. Exiting combat removes all stacks of Sentinel's Eye. They don't want pre-buffing. Using charge and teleport abilities do not remove stacks of Sentinel's Eye. This, I feel like, is a very ridiculous set that I am more than uh, happy to try out for sure. So that's something I want to try out. Uh, we have Tarakir Strike. We have Weapon and Spell Damage up to the 4-piece bonus. We have Dealing Damage with a Fully Charged Heavy Attack. Grants you major berserk for four seconds, increasing your damage done by ten percent. Again, I'm not I'm not ever really a big fan of fully charged heavy attack, uh, proccing something. Well, I feel like it, it should be something that could be cancelable. Like a medium weave could give me the buff. I feel like that's a bit more of a skill play, but why not? And this effect can occur once every four seconds. So I feel like they made this for a heavy attack, uh setup obviously but it's kind of like hey we're kind of sorry about the open soul thing here's here's a major berserk for free uh if you if you want to still like heavy attack with a landing stuff uh i'm not a big fan of the like the two to four piece bonuses if this is for specifically like a light, lightning staff heavy attack build i feel like critical chance would be better in the, at, for, with this set but i guess they i, I guess we, we will take it and just go critical set, uh cr critical rating on the secondary set Heavy attack builds back. Uh, Major Berserk is nice. So th this does bear some testing. Dreads of War. We have max stamina, weapon and spell damage, max magicka. We also do have your light and fully charged heavy attacks gain 100% stat effect chance. The stat effect is based on the damage type of your weapon. Uh, okay. 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 All right. Interesting. We'll have to test this as well. We have more ascribed thesis, light armor set. Uh, we do have a. Critical Chance, Minor Slayer, Max Magicka, a Perfected Bonus gives Critical Chance as well. Uh, fifth Piece Bonus gives us an increase in Critical Chance by 128 for every major buff active on you. So, Major War, Major War. Okay, so we can expect at least uh, 200 and or, uh, about 200, 300, maybe at least up to 1536. Oh, there's a cap. Okay. Up to 1536 critical chance, increase your critical damage done by 1% for every minor buff active on you, which is actually really, which is really great, actually, if uh, you, you want to take away from the sets that do offer that crit damage to the group. Uh, up to 12% critical damage done. Okay, I think this is a very, I, I think this is an interesting set. Raging. Yeah, up to 12 Silvers of the No Arca, the medium armor set, critical chance, minor slayer, critical chance, weapon and spell damage, perfected bonus. Dealing critical damage gives you a stack of silver for 10 seconds. You can only gain one stack of silver every half a second. When you gain your third stack, the stacks are consumed and the crystals launch at the last enemy damaged. Dealing X amount of physical damage. This damage scales off of your weapon or spell damage. Once you launch the crystals, you cannot gain silver for five seconds. Okay, so the third stack can come within one and a half seconds. And it just automatically launches. Up. It's, it's an interesting proc set, that's for sure, single target wise. Hmm. We will also test this for sure. Zorin's Masterpiece Light Armor Set. Uh, this is a healer or support set, probably. Max Magicka, Minor Aegis, Magicka Recovery, Max Magicka. Increases your max magic and max stamina by 1667 for you and up to 11 other group members within 28 meters of you. This bonus persists through death. I feel like this is a very uh, underwhelming support set. Like 1667 stamina mag? I don't really see the value in this compared to like the current support itemization right now. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. This is, this is kind of weird. This, this is a kind of weird one. I do hope that they address this set because it's just not that great. I, I feel like I'd rather use Navintas, the set, over, over, over this, if I had to, if I had to be offered the choice here. Um, we also do have Lucent Echoes, which is the heavy armor set. 4% healing taken, 
minor aegis at all times, reducing damage taken from dungeon trial and arena monsters by 5%. And uh, we do have max health. And this is a cool set I'm about to show you, actually. 12, 1206 max health. While you have more than 50% health, increase the critical damage and healing of your group members by 11%. Okay, so it's it's very different from what I saw in Amsterdam on the playtest. So on the Amsterdam playtest, it was like 780 critical rating if you have more than 50% health to everybody in your group. But now it's like critical damage and healing. I'm just thinking to myself, huh, okay. They really did not want to give us more critical rating here. Group members wearing Lucent Echoes cannot benefit from this effect. Okay, while you have 50% or less health, reduce your damage taken from monsters by 20%. Interesting. You'd think the heavy set will just replace Major Force. 100% of the time, people are already running Slacks to maximum Major Force. That is a potential thought, for sure. I look at this, and I'm just like, I don't know now if I want to wear this in terms of the support itemization. Because I feel like the critical rating, maybe maybe it was too strong in their in their view, but I feel like the critical rating would have made this set very, very popular. But now it's just critical damage, which certainly puts a pause. So I definitely have to think about it. You would rather have critical chance and critical damage. Only thing looking remotely good to me is the medium set numbers dependent too. Yeah, I, I feel like the light armor set is very interesting. I feel like, uh, not just for like group play. And I feel like the medium armor set is interesting. The light armor support set is very bad. The heavy set, I'm a little disappointed that they changed it from critical rating to critical damage, but uh, I don't know. New mythic items. All right, perfect. We have the heavy gauntlets or heavy hands, Rorkin Steam Guards. We have activating block one combat, grants you steam guarding for half a second, reducing your damage taken by 99%. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds. So for half a second, you reduce your damage taken by 99%. For half a second, 99%. That's, uh, that is, the 99% is crazy alone, but the half second, you have to really time this in PvP or something, man. Like, and also, I, uh, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if, like, I thought about that too, Andy, about the add-on aspect of using this mythic effectively, but I feel like you could still time it well, given, depending on how much shit is on your screen, or how many people are attacking you at the, at the same time in PvP. I don't know about the half... I don't know, okay. I mean, again, this, I feel like, needs a bit of testing. But we can reduce the cooldown by an effect of five seconds by blocking an attack while it's active. So, potentially, you could be having 99% mitigation every uh, 4.5 seconds, which is crazy. So, I don't know. I, I would love to actually use this and test it out in PvP. Um, <coughs> sorry, the Shadow Queen's cow, the uh, lighthead. We have the wall crouch. You can see witnesses and guards through walls. Successfully pickpocketing a witness or guard applies distracted to them for 10 seconds. Stunning your target. Decreases your detection radius and stealth by 30 meters against distracted targets. Uh, this is a, not really a combat method. This is more of a quality of life slash, uh, just non-combat mythic that a lot of people have been requesting actually. Kind of like the harvesting mythic. Uh, I, I do have an update from Gina, if you guys want to hear it, about the PTS. We, we, uh, let me know if you guys want to hear the update. Might, might, not, might, might, not, might not be something you want to hear. But I, I do appreciate that they're trying to go a certain direction with at least one mythic. I would love to see a mythic related to crafting or harvesting instead of just pickpocketing or like uh, the, the justice system in the game. You don't want to hear it? Okay, well, I'm going to say it anyway. Gina says that they are looking at least another hour of PTS maintenance, maybe more. Just a heads up. Uh, for those of you waiting on PTS, I, it sounds like we will not be able to uh, raid at the 5 p.m. time. So, maybe. Maybe we won't, we won't be able to see the trial today. I'll try to get into a group, maybe. Um, could uh, I'm gonna suggest pushing the time back at least? Could push start time back. Okay, uh, we have the necklace. 
uh, the Saint and the Seducer. While in combat, you gain one of five random major buffs, which changes every 10 seconds. It's like data trickery uh, on steroids. Enemies within 12 meters of you gain one of five random minor debuffs, depending on which buff you have. So if you get a major Berserk, you inflict, you inflict minor maim with, on anyone within 12 meters of you. I, I think this is a very fun mythic, honestly. If you get major resolve, you, you inflict minor breach on everyone around you within 12 meters. Major force, minor brittle. Major evasion, minor vulnerability. Major courage, minor cowardice. Pretty cool. Okay. New antiquities. They, oh, we do have a mirror more music box and an alien blacksmithing station that can be discovered through antiquities. We do have the refulgent Miramore Steed. That's the trifecta mount. I am hoping to get footage of today as well. Uh, we do have the Wildburn Tiger Lynx, uh, which is, I believe, the overland achievement to get the mount. So I, I appreciate that they're adding... <coughs> or not adding. Continuing with the mount trend over here. Okay. Let me, let me drink some water real quick. Oh, I'm yapping too much. Okay, we got a prism wasp for a pet. We have some, we have three outfit styles. We have Nentherian's Regalia, Gold Road Dragoon, and Ailey Lich. We also do have a True Sight Lens emote by completing quests. I'm really enjoying seeing a few, like uh, just a few more rewards being obtainable through a variety of gameplay uh, achievements on multiple levels of gameplay, if that makes sense. Like, it's not just trial. Uh, it's not just a trial getting <clears throat> uh, a mount. It's also the overland uh, that can get a mount, and so on. And the skin. Okay, let me explain the skin. The skin. Okay. There is a skin called Fractured Glory Epidermis. It looks cool. But you have to do Adventure Across a Decade Achievement. This achievement is... You have to complete every main quest line in the game, okay? And what, what that means is you have to complete the EP quest line, okay? The AD quest line, the DC quest line, and all the DLC quest lines. Not the side quest, the main quest line of each DLC. Every chapter, every DLC, except the dungeons. So... If you want the skin, it's going to be a lot of questing. Uh, and we do have the Athelius Dreads in Veterans Homage. That's the, this is the trial one. And we have a few dies. And we have the St. Alicia uh, Tales of Tribute deck. I haven't really kept up with Tales of Tribute at all. I should probably get back into a little, just a little bit. Um, we also do have two new houses that we'll probably preview in, in, in on the PTS. And we have options to earn two new homes. So we have the Rosewine Retreat, which is an inn. And we have a Mary, Mary Vine Retreat available for purchase for 1.3 million gold. Not bad. And the house that is only a uh, crown sorter, which is a, yeah, the Zan Kaj Crest. Okay. And we have a variety of new furnishings that can be found in Westwield, including 101 new furnishing plans. 101 new furnishing plans, that's crazy, actually. 7 new furnishing plans exclusive to the world event. 10 new achievement furnishings. 13 new antiquity furnishings. 10 new paintings, which can only be rarely found in treasure chests. Oh, no. 20 new stealable furnishings. 21 new home goods furnishings. 4 new tapestries. And 12 new skill scribing furnishings. That's a lot of furnishings. Uh, yeah. Okay. And we have some achievements and titles. I actually want your guys' opinion on the titles. So, let's see. The Hero of Gold Road. That's just like story achievement title. The Pathfinder. That's pretty cool, actually. Luminous. Very nice, in my opinion. Crystal Sharp. It's okay. The Unshattered. The Unstoppable. The Arcane Stabilizer. The Inheritor. I think my favorite here is going to be the Unstoppable or Crystal Sharp, maybe. Or, or I mean, I, don't, I think these are very good titles compared to uh, 2021 and 2022. 
I don't think they will uh, need to do passes on these titles, unlike the pre previous uh, couple of chapters, because it's like, I, I think they're cool enough. I think they sound good enough, right? It's not like Stone Kisser or, <laughs> or what, what was it? What was it? Coral Caretaker or whatever. You know, it's just like, it's okay. Like, it, it's good. It's good. I think it's good. I think the titles are nice for sure. Uh, all right. We got HDR support. They are adding HDR support for PC. Okay. That's nice. Uh, let's keep moving. Character resolution. Building off the min spec change, minimum spec changes. In, oh, yeah, they did update the minimum uh, specs for ESO. And they are going to... Oh, they made additional adjustments to how the game handles resolution of other characters. Both NPC and other remote players appeared near you. Okay, as has always been the case, characters that are closest to you will appear at the highest resolution we offer. And as characters move further away, their resolution will decrease. That said, we have increased the distance before the resolution drops, so you'll now be able to see high-resolution characters from farther away. That's very nice. Additionally, the max number of characters that we show at its highest resolution was previously capped at a low number. They didn't say what number it was, though. We've added a new graphic setting on PC, character resolution, which allows you to control the presets for the number of higher resolution characters. By default, character resolution is set to low, so you will not see immediate changes to nearby characters. Increasing the preset to medium high ultra increases the number of higher resolution characters. You can see in the distance at which you can see them. Okay, that, that's, that's interesting. Mail improvements. Oh, more mail improvements. Very nice. We have made a number of interface and system improvements to mail. All changes outlined below apply to both keyboard and mouse and gamepad interfaces. Mail is now automatically... Oh, we have three categories now, not just player mail and uh, system mail. Okay. Player mail. Messages received from other players in game, system mail, non-player sources, include item attachments like hirelings, as well as any mails received from customer support. Systems alerts. What? This sounds very, this sounds very dangerous. Messages received from various non-player sources are information only and do not include attachments. Um, so just this, but no attachments. <laughs> I wonder if like it's a performance thing, maybe? Mail sorting. Player mail is now sorted based on expiration with the most recently received messages displayed at the top. Oh, okay. That's gonna that's gonna throw me off a little bit, like initially for sure. Typically, like the most recent mail goes down the list. But okay. That's that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna be a little bit off for me. Uh we have system mail and system alerts are sorted based on expiration with the soonest to expire messages displayed at the top. Okay, so everything's gonna be at the top if it's the most recent. Uh attachment preview, mail headers now display the icon of your first uh first attachments, things for the followage. And we do have inventory space display. The mail screen now displays how many... Oh, that's very nice. It's a small thing, but it's very nice. We do have a... It basically, it will show how many inventory slots are available in our bag, even when we're in the mail screen. We have the delete after claim option. This option in the mail screen causes any system mail to be automatically deleted. After you claim its attachments and is enabled by default. Nice. This option does not affect player mail. Take all function. This button claims all attachments from all mails currently visible in the current active category. Mail is processed based on the currently ordered, sorted order and starts the mail soon as to expire. Note that player mail and system mail have different sorting rules explained above. COD player mails and customer support mails are not affected by take all. Okay, interesting. Note that the delete after claim option if enabled will apply to every system mail affected by the take all. Okay. I feel like they really want to definitely work on the mailing system. I, I, I hope I see something about the guild system too. Okay, deleting mails and attachments. You can now delete a mail. Oh, that still has an unclaimed attachment? I don't know how to feel about this. Wait. A confirmation dialog will appear to ensure this is the intended action. So I have a question. What if, okay, what if someone like sends you something in the mail and you delete it? Is that, is that item gone forever? What if it's, what if, what if someone CODs you like, I don't know. They're perfect row. Instead of paying for you, you delete it. Like, does that return the mail or does that delete the mail? 
But then it says COD player meals and customer support meals are not affected by, but that's take all function. I want more detail. I want to test this on the VTS. <laughs> I'll send someone like, I don't know, a thousand soul gems and see, see what happens if they delete it. Uh, all right. Hireling correspondence. Okay. Oh, nice. Mail messages. We were just talking about this earlier because, you know, people were wondering what the backstory behind Pakrudi with the crown creeds was. Okay. So hireling mails uh, will now be automatically recorded. Oh, in a new section of the Lord Library. Nice. That, that will... Uh, uh, it's just very nice for lore slash, you know, the immersion. Mail expiration changes as part of our continuing efforts to improve server performance and stability. We've reduced the expiration times of certain types of system mail. Okay. Seven days. Oh, okay. Seven, oh, seven days for a lot of things, including rewards for the worthy. Holy shit. Activity finder rewards. Guild trader returns and sales and weekly leadable rewards. Two weeks. Promotional rewards such as Twitch drops 14 days to a maximum of 180 days. Interesting. Huh. Mails with rewards generated by direct purchases made outside the game, such as the chapters and newcomers pack, will continue to never expire. Well, obviously, you don't want people to lose their uh, <laughs> bought DLCs and stuff, right? Yeah, it's, it's a lot shorter. It's 30 days right now for all mail. But now they're reducing it to 7 days for these categories and 14 days for... The guild trader returns and sales and the weekly leaderboard rewards while the promotional rewards can be anywhere between 14 to 180 days which is a very odd range but okay yeah i think it's gonna cause some issues with some people's inventory management with rewards for the worthy for sure right so that's that's gonna be something to keep an eye on if you if you do stockpile things in your mail so this is actually very important uh uh bullet point in the patch notes for you guys to think about uh, other than that, we do have the expiration timer for most mail types does not initiate until the mail is received while your character is logged in as a reminder. There are, however, several exceptions where the timer begins when the mail is sent, like player mail, guild trader mail, customer service mails, guild funder. Let's see. Okay. All right. ESO is joining the Xbox initiative. This is, this is a lot of quality of life here. It, Xbox Initiative, making steps towards a more sustainable gaming future. What does this... Ah, environmental. All right. It's critical we do so uh, in bringing the joy in community of gaming to everyone as part of Team Xbox while taking care of our planet. We're working to reduce our environmental impact and creating opportunities for gamers to reduce their environmental impact while gaming. Okay. Gamers to reduce their own environmental impact. I feel like gamers are like... <laughs> The demographic that has the least amount of environmental impact. <laughs> I guess maybe like the, I, the 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 GPUs maybe you know sucking up all the sucking up all the power and shit. Maybe that's I, I suppose that's a, that's a big thing, right? Like I remember when people were mining crypto with with, with like a farm of the uh, latest Nvidia fucking twenty eighties or whatever, and that just like sapped a bunch of networks anyway <clears throat> so i mean i can see that okay cool yeah see it, i look at this reduce gpu usage during player inactivity there is no reason for your device to be working so hard when you aren't doing anything the game already checks after 20 minutes of being inactive our servers will kick players out of the main menu where power consumption is minimal until that happens though it can be wasteful the game client will now drop the resolution in half. Whoa. If it has not detected any input for five minutes, it will impose a 30 FPS cap while inactive. <laughs> this results in our power consumption going from 65% down to 24% when in performance mode when you are AFK. All right. All right. All right. Well, you know, I, I would, it's for PC as well, not just Xbox and, and, and PS5. Uh, I like I, I applaud the initiative, I suppose, and I am sure also someone's gonna make an add-on where it's like, oh, you want uncapped FPS while you're AFK? Here's the add-on. Uh, screen dimming while inactive. All major consoles have an OS level setting to do this, but there's no PC counterpart. So the ESO now includes one built in for PC. Oh. At the same time, your resolution drops will dim the screen on the PC client. We felt it worthwhile since the data we found shows that screens that are not as bright will consume less power. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, especially for LED or OLED screens. So, yes, as research has found, the, the less bright the screen, 
The less power it uses, basically. I mean, I, I feel like everyone needs this. Rip to ambience footage. Ah, true, true. Reduce GPUs in contextual menus. When viewing most menus, such as ma e.g. managing inventory, achievements, quest journal, frame rate is now capped at 30 FPS. Some menus are exempt on a case-by-case -case basis. Conversations, various minigames. Okay. Interesting. So, they, they're gonna... So the menus will have a capped frame rate of 30. Okay. Testing performance mobile in this menu shows a 50% reduction in GPU consumption, resulting in overall power consumption going from approximately 63% of the maximum possible on the console down to 37%. Okay. I bet there's people out there that are like reading this and like, ah, oh, whatever. I just want, I just want uncap FES. Healing immunity on health bars. We've added a new state to health bars for healing immunity, which will display on the target that's immune to your heals. For example, with Ring of the Pale Order. Oh, this is very nice. Other players will see you as healing immune, but since you can heal yourself, your own health bar will display normally. Group name, group frames and nameplate health bars will now also display absorb shields. Healing absorbs trauma and healing immunity. This is something I actually noticed. Uh, if you watch my video on the new trial, like the nameplate health bars had like additional bars or colors to it. And I saw that. I was like, is that an add-on? Well, well, I don't have an add-on on this computer. And then I'm like, oh, they must have updated the the nameplate UI. And it looks like I'm right. I was right. Uh, we, we're we going to see uh, not just health, but we're going to see absorb shields, healing absorbs, and healing immunity. That's actually really nice. That's really, really nice. I like that. New achievements. Uh, okay. There's a lot of achievements that will also be rewarded to us retroactively, I'm assuming, based on the skim here. There is also a new achievement for completing decades worth of Tamriel's main storylines. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is what I was talking about. So you gotta do all these quest lines, all these main quest lines. All right, cowboy, saddle up. All right. Let's see. During this PTS cycle, okay, we got the scribing centric template and we got the standard level template. Cool. Uh, let's see. Scribing. All right. These are just known issues. So I'm going to kind of skip over it a little bit. I'm going to skim it just so we're prepared for the PTS here. Uh, all right. This is it. The juice. The juiciest part. The juiciest, juiciest part of the patch notes. We have the combat and gameplay changes. We have greetings. The big chapter of the year is upon us. And this one is quite exciting with the addition of scribing. Due to this large feature, as well as following suit of previous years, this update will be on the lighter end in terms of actual combat adjustments to the existing gameplay. Much of the team has been incredibly hard at work making sure striving hits the ground running, and that we have more time to iterate on ability values and bugs during the PTS cycle. For the live combat experience, expect to see mainly bug fixes and iterative work with a small handful of targeted balance changes for some outliers. Well, that makes sense. They're adding a completely new combat system into the game that's, like, independent of the traditional uh, combat systems. So, I didn't really think they were going to do much, but I do expect to see probably some, like, passive changes and uh, potential effect changes as well. And probably some tooltip adjustments for a couple classes I feel like that do need it. So, let's, let's keep reading it. As for some of the more impactful changes coming, we have a very small number of class changes aimed at helping with some issues we've seen long-term feedback on. Templars may be delighted to hear they now have access to some crowd control in their kit. Oh, really? Okay. With the addition of an immobilize to Blazing Spear. Blazing Spear will now immobilize? That's actually, you know, honestly, when you throw that spear, I feel like that there should be a reward for that if you hit a player with that. Like... I love how they mentioned Templars because there was a thread on the PTS subsection of the forums where it's like, what is what does Zoss hate Templars? Uh, hopefully assisting with their tanking and jabbing capabilities. Dark Shades for the Nightblade will now always deal area damage. Oh, interesting. To help the class gain some more impactful cleave damage in the debuff application for tanking, Wardens may find some more value to their betting niche outside the PvP, where it will now grant a small increase to your damage done for a short duration, if it fails to remove a negative effect. Okay, not bad. Finally, Necromancers have regained some raw power back in their tethers as they've fallen into the decay of the last year or so. Oh, yeah, they're very self-aware of the class balancing, which I am glad that they are 
like the wording of this gives me confidence as a player that they are definitely aware of uh, player grievances. So that's a good start. I really, I really am enjoying the patch notes so far. But um, the Templar one, I feel like there's a there's a weird thing going on right now with Templar and Nightblades. Templars are actually pretty good now in PVE, whereas in PvP they might be lacking. And with Nightblade, they're very lacking in PVE, but really good in PvP. So th these two classes, uh, at least they're not Warden, <laughs> but these two classes, Rift the Warden mains, these two classes are kind of in a weird spot. I, I understand why it's it seems so uh, conflicting. But uh, let's keep reading. Outside of classes, uh, we also have a small handful of changes to those who howl at the moon, giving some good head pats to the werewolves out there. Okay. Generally speaking, they've fallen far enough behind the pack. Get it? They're werewolves. Pat on the head. Behind the pack. Get it? Werewolves, dogs, or whatever. And many <laughs> aspects of the game. So we're going through some of their abilities to add meaningful buffs while also trying to do a better job to represent the existing playstyles for them. This includes those pack leaders out there who prefer to protect their pack instead, with some changes to the morph's roar to differentiate playstyles between damage dealers and tanks or disruptors. Okay, interesting. Ferocious roar will focus on enabling the more traditional bloodthirsty playstyle, terrifying foes so much they'll take bonus damage from piercing howl, while deafening roar will focus on helping those out those who wish to control enemies, which drops all offensive bonuses for defensive ones by granting major protection while slotting, as well as ca causing all of their heavy attacks to taunt and- Oh! Okay! To taunt enemies for 15 seconds with heavy attacks. Before you ask, this does not allow for an AoE taunt. Sheesh! Oh, what, what is this copy pasta? Uh... We do have... Okay, that's the high-level view. Alright. Happy 10 years of ESO. Yep, same to you. Uh, let's see. Fixed an issue where many movement-oriented abilities, such as Misform, could have their animations broken by rule dodging at the frame of activation. Rule dodge will now be disabled temporarily while you are actively being moved from one of these abilities. Fix an issue where channel heavy attack animations would break and lock you in the animation if you hit escape during the channel. Okay, now you can actually escape. Fixed an issue where some player abilities were not properly respecting line of sight checks. This in includes the following Blessing Protection, Fong Growth, Obsidian Shield, and their respective morphs. <clears throat> uh, okay. Fixed an issue where some knockback effects, I'll read it in a bit, where it could desync their, desync their impacted targets for remote clients if the attack that applied the knockback also killed those targets. This is mainly notable in places such as Sunspire, where many attacks like Wing Trash kill a group member and cause them to appear in a different position than they actually were. Okay, that's... Okay, finally. Holy crap. After... After... Years. Easy. Kind of back after a break here. So, here we go. Class nerfs. Class buffs. Class changes, potentially. Arcanist. Herald of the Tome. Cephalyrx Flail. Morph. This morph now ranks up in 1.1% healing per rank, resulting in 3.3% additional healing at rank 4, rather than reducing its cost per rank, as the morph upgrade does not interact with cost at all and was offering too many unique advantages. Someone and someone in the ESUP in the ESUU Discord server like predicted that they would nerf flail. I don't know if it was some like I don't know if that person is chat, but I don't that's going to definitely hit some of the sustain, for sure. That's something to think about. Okay. It's not untry with cost at all. Hmm. Okay. But it's more healing. Uh, okay. I don't know. Definitely, they're trying to hit the sustain a little bit, but not too much. Dragon Knight, Fiery Grip. Chains of Devastation. Morph. Fix an issue where this morph could sometimes cause your character to face the wrong direction after using. I am so surprised that they haven't touched Dragon Knight. Uh, I mean, they really love Dragon Knight, man. Uh, but yeah. Necromancer. Grave Lord. Shocking Siphon. Increase the damage per tick of the ability in morphs by 33%, so they're closer to stationary over time effects rather than being treated as ticket. Yes, 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 yes. This is this is good. This is this is good. It's 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 it's, it's a good step. Living Death, Restoring Tether, Increase the Healing per Tick by 14%, so they're closer to stationary over time. Okay. Wait, that's it? Ah, man. Uh, okay, it's a good step. I've, 
I feel like they could have done a bit more for Necromancer here. Just a bit more. But I guess they don't want to touch it too much, as they said earlier in the uh, PTS patch notes. Okay. Nightblade, Summon Shade, Dark Shade. This morph, uh, Dark Shade now only uses AoEs rather than using it once every five seconds and then swapping to a single target attack to help add more options for cleave damage in the class. Adjust the visual effects to appear as drain power rather than whirlwind to feel more appropriate for Nightblade ability. <clears throat> okay. Blood magic. This passive now activates when you cast a dark magic ability with a cost rather than when you hit an enemy with a directly applied dark magic ability. Oh, okay. Not, not too bad. This was done to make the passive more reliable. And, yeah, okay. That's good. Okay. Well, this is a interesting change. I think for Templar tanks as a pain point, I don't think this was, again, I don't think this was for a Templar class as, as a whole. I think this was like a pain point for Templar tanking. Blazing Spear now also causes the initial hit to immobilize enemies hit for four seconds. So I, I don't know if there's a cap on this, but we'll have to test it out. Templar tanks have slowly been creeping into the scene as we've tried to find ways to empower their crusade but they're still lacking a definitive and satisfying immobilized tool to help keep control and the on the battlefield. While it won't pack the raw supportive power of an ability like Dark Talons or Encase, we're hoping it still helps out the role while also creating more satisfying interplay in the Adric Spear skill line to empower their bread and butter. Puncturing Strikes. Uh, okay, wait, wait, wait. While also creating more satisfying interplay. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, so they won. Maybe like, so that so, so they so their predictive pattern is stun after you throw the blazing spear and then use puncturing strikes on them. Okay, sun shield fix an issue where disabilities more visual effects could have failed to appear. Okay, restoring aura fix an issue. Warden. Okay, one change. Betty Nutch. Uh, this ability is morphs now also increases your damage done by five percent for five seconds if no negative effect was removed from the ability. In order to help the Warden's damage production without rocking the boat too much in PvP, where they already are pretty plenty strong, we're adding a conditional bonus that will mainly activate in PvE. We're also trying to add more sources of damage to their damage focus skill line so we can slowly look at shifting damage out of their tanking focus skill line. Oh, uh, you know, that's a good sign. Honestly. Uh. A weapon, bow, rapid fire. Fixed an issue with this ultimate and the toxic barrage morph where the visual effects could become stuck on a target even after the ability was cancelled. Fixed an issue where these two abilities also shot a phantom arrow, dealing 10 instances of damage despite only shooting 9 arrows maximum. The total damage per cast has remained rel relatively untouched. Some minor rounding may result in 1% changes. Thanks for the followage. Welcome in, Vicky. Uh, Toxic Barrage Morph. Increase the dot effect to match the new damage per shot by 11%. Now that applies one less. Okay, one less tick. Okay. Whatever. Soul Trap, fix an issue. Okay, Werewolf. All right, there's actually a hefty series of changes or buffs to the Werewolf. I mean, Werewolf has been a joke since they got toned down quite a bit uh, after Greymore. So for the past, like, four years, basically, they haven't been very good. They've been a meme. So I'm glad they're finally kind of... Looking at Werewolf. Like, they were such a meme back when we were still in the class representative program for ESO. People thought I was, like, the class rep for Werewolves. But, um, yeah, that's the, that's a story for another time. So, this ultimate and its morphs light and heavy attacks now deal bleed damage rather than physical. That? I'll take this. That's really good. That's actually... That's not bad at all. I'll take that. Honestly, as someone who does want to play Werewolf, like, a lot... I, I'll take this. This is okay. This is okay. Okay, let's see what else they did. These attacks now have a chance to apply their status effect. Now hemorrhaging. Oh, okay. With light attacks at 3%, partially charged heavy attacks at 5%, and fully charged heavy attacks at 10%. Fair. Okay, cool. Lacking a second ability bar, those with the beast within them have a harder time interacting with status effects, and have fallen a bit further behind in damage production than we'd like. Well, of course, like, status effects are a chunk of your damage output. Like poison, burning, right? We're throwing them a bone 
Oh, there's so many, there's so many dog puns in the fucking past shows. I wonder who wrote this part. Like, haven't you guys noticed that there's so many dog puns? Oh, werewolf has been falling behind the pack. Oh, a pat on the head. Oh, uh, we're gonna throw them a bone. <laughs> like, what the hell is going on with the patch notes here? I'm enjoying it honestly. I like. I, I love. I love the uh, the jokes. Uh, you know, the dog jokes. Okay. Uh, by letting these attacks have a small passive chance to apply them while making their build paths slightly more diverse, with status effect chance being a bit more enticing. This won't be a silver bullet to solve their damage def deficits, but werewolves don't like silver. Oh my lord. Okay. Let's, let's keep going. Roar. This ability in the Ferocious Roar Morph. Now apply unique debuff titled Terrified to enemies they hit for 10 seconds. Terrified doesn't do anything outright other than place a tracking effect on enemies to help where, where, werewolves mark their prey. Does that mean like you can get invisible enemies? Deafening Roar Morph. Now grants major protection for slotting Rather than major prophecy and savagery, okay. What was slotted, it also causes your heavy attacks to taunt enemies for 15 seconds. Okay, not bad. Since our fix of Tormentor, some werewolves have been barking up a storm. <laughs> gotta appreciate the werewolf. Puns and dog jokes. I, you really do, honestly. Since our fixed tormentor, some werewolves have been barking up a storm at the loss of their way to pounce into the tank scene. Oh my lord. <laughs> We're adding some love back to the mix with a simple way to gain a taunt while simultaneously differentiating. The morphs here further for those who wish to lead the pack versus those who just want to go berserk. Piercing Howl. This ability and morphs no longer deal 10% bonus damage to werewolves or to enemies that are facing them. Okay. And instead deal 10% bonus damage to enemies that are terrified. Oh, that's, that's okay. That's not bad at all. Howl of Agony Morph. This morph now adds an additional 10% bonus damage to off balance enemies, stacking up to 20% when they're also terrified. Rather than dealing 25% to enemies that are facing you or are feared. Hmm. I, uh, I don't know how to feel about this one here. Facing you. I mean, I feel like I would have liked 25% facing me, but okay. We'll see, we'll see. We'll, we'll have to test it. This morph now also ranks up with cost reduction, rather than ranking up the bonus damage effect. Howl of Despair. Extended the duration of the buffs granted by Feeding Frenzy to 20 seconds up from 10. We've heard the howling. Dude, I gotta count this shit. It's like the 20th. It's like the 20th. It's like the tw it's like the it's like the it's like the twentieth werewolf slash dog joke. We've heard the howling, the barking. Like, uh, we gotta throw you a boom. I've been struggling to engage with these abilities, bonus effects. So we're changing things up to allow for more interaction between PvE and PvP playstyles. Okay. I wish they did a bit more again with the werewolf. I don't know. Just a bit more. Just a bit more. Like, just a little bit more. Okay. Let's see. To set the pack up for success. Align Swore, Assault, Seed Shield... Propelling shield morph, this ability now uh, affects abilities with a range of 28 meters or higher to ensure it behaves closer to reach passing battle spirit. Okay, makes sense. Uh, what is this? Consumables? Ah, yes. This has, uh, I feel like this has been a long time coming. Gradual ravage health. Uh, po po pots. Fix an issue where the potions made with these traits could trigger many other events, such as items. Let's. Yep. Crafted sets, Cold Harbor's favorite, fix an issue where Honor would often spawn in dead. Okay. Thankfully, Honor can never truly really die. Murkholden. Man, I feel like I've seen Murkholden pop up every single, like, every other patch notes at this point for the past couple of years. The summon sword from this set no longer has a second sword appearing in the ground. Okay. Oh, because... Because... Okay, I, okay, I, I understand what's going on here. 
like how you have your feet uh, uh, carry your secondary weapon. I, I guess Morkolden must have some sort of model where it technically has a secondary weapon and it has feet. Technically, uh, in terms of models, like behind the game dev scenes. Okay, dungeon and arena sets. Hagraven's Garden. Fix an issue where this set could sometimes activate in situations you should not have. Rush of Agony. This set now has a 800 millisecond delay before attempting to pull targets. To increase the amount of reaction time enemies have before they are yanked. The pull now properly interacts as a projectile with a minimum travel time of 200 milliseconds and animates the pull appropriately to reduce the feeling of rubber banding. Increase the radius of the pull of rushing agony, Rush of Agony to 12 meters up from 10 meters to help offset some of the reductions to impact for the wearer. Okay. Delay damage remains unchanged. Still happening after two seconds from activation and dealing damage with a 7 meter radius. Okay, we're cleaning up a lot of negative experiences with this set regarding how it feels to both use and have used against you by adding a delay time to the pool, as well as cleaning up a bunch of inconsistencies about how the pool applies and appears. While the pool should be easier to both position and react to now, the damage itself should present slightly more of a threat, since the delay between the pool affecting you and the damage going out has been reduced to one second. Okay, this should help the set feel more impactful against those who neglect the agony conflict, while simultaneously ensuring there are more opportunities to recognize and react to its threats. The radius increase should also help the pull become more of a selling point of the set to, for those who desire such control for their foes. Okay. You excited to see those new stylings? Uh, yeah, I'm excited to sh like finally show you guys the stylings. Monster masks. Okay, there's a fix for choke thorn. Uh, fix an issue where this item set could trigger or proc off of, uh, events other than the ability cast. It will now only activate during the activation abilities that meet its requirements rather than the effects that those abilities may apply as well, such as heal over time destruction or drippy. Okay. Mad Tinkerer, fixed. Increase the chance for Miriam Bastion to recite idle lines. Okay. Companion mounts, double edge. Uh, and that's really it for combat. Um, very nice to see some changes for the werewolf, although just like the Necromancer, I felt like they could have gone a little bit further, even if it's a very small combat change. But we'll see how striving really affects um the classes especially i mean players tend to come up with very crazy stuff um so yeah we'll, we'll, we'll see so that's it that's for that's it for the combat notes uh everything else is exploration itemization quests and zones we have some monster changes potentially i'm getting an air drum uneasy alliance rage of dragons beware of liar okay increase the drop rate of grass crafted breaches for the esoteric okay cool uh, some drop chances, fix an issue, fix an issue, map pins, fix an issue with Tales of Tribute, like uh, a series of issues with Tales of Tribute. If you play KO all, knock out all while Carwell had multiple equations of good prestige. Okay. Some, some Tales of Tribute balancing. Income Blood now grants plus one coin combo too. Uh, more issues with art and animation fixed. Explosion. Same as Edge. Frost bombs from Exarchonic Yasela. Will now properly reduce your healing taken. What? What? This was broken? <laughs> I didn't even know this was broken. So, the frost bomb mechanic on boss one in Saiyan's Edge was apparently bugged. Like, I guess we had to, we had an easy time healing through it all the, all this time. Um, fashion mimic. Okay. Fixed an issue, fixed an issue, dungeon group content, Castle Thorn, Partners in Crime, Quen, Functionality, Combined Repair Kits, okay. Fix, uh, issues with the Chaos, uh, five fixes for the Chaos Ball, Damage Ramming, Properly Showcase, okay. Itemization, Fixed an issue, we're Cold Fire, and Frost Knights just needed to be direct hits and under siege weapons damage them unlike other siege which hit all valid targets outside of impact zones okay so they were bugged added several gold rolled rewards the infinite archive potential list of available rewards from fighter okay the golden vendor Adazabi Aba Adaru will no longer be desynced between PC and consoles between chapter updates. Okay, that's nice. I think the home. There's a lot of housing and furnishing fixes. It's nice to see. There's a lot. Oh my lord.
Okay, what is this? Performed an audit, accidental deletion. Oh, okay, so these were these didn't have to destroy uh die, a pop up. That's sad. Achievement furnishings. Fix minor text issues. Some players began to see that the graphics card would render many empty frames per second during loading, which would cause concern as hardware usage went up. The ESO game client has now decoupled that loading from frame rate, allowing the optimiza optimization to stay in place, but no longer affecting graphics cards. Fixed an issue where using all tab while the game was running full screen exclusive could cause a freeze or a crash. That's that's nice. I, I play windowed full screen. I don't know about anybody else. Um, error messages stating too many modifications to save. More uh, cleaned up NPCs who are walking around without clothes. Where was this? Fixed. Uh, quest and zone fixes. UI fixes. And that's it. We've reached the end of the patch notes. Not gonna lie, I am disappointed they didn't add at least ten to twenty thousand HP and at least another ten to twenty thousand heals per second PP. <laughs> well, uh it wasn't it was a it was long uh patch notes, but not long. I feel like uh it could have been longer if they had described every single detail about striving and styling a bit more, but obviously when the test on the PTS. Combat changes were okay tame uh it's i appreciate that they are looking at that they are self-aware that they are aware of some of the grievances from the players both pve and pvp and i'm glad that they're looking at the werewolf again which has which has been sorely needed for the past three three to four years at this point um other than that i don't really see anything else apart from the item sets and the scribing system um that would be that would shake up the game or shake up the meta so we'll, we'll see we'll see what do you guys think just right home is it true that the leak tank trial says like evan but crit so in the play test build in amsterdam it was critical rating but now it's critical damage and healing no pvp section i think that's coming quarter four but i don't think these notes are bad uh I think they're decent, considering that a pretty significant portion of the notes address quality of life things, and they are trying to actually uh, solve performance issues through not PvP or PvE, but through the mailing system. Uh, but yeah, hoping that the PTS opens up soon, and we get to see a lot more things. I'll probably be streaming this. I'll probably be streaming PTS quite a bit this week, and we'll be looking over everything, and have some special news in a bit. But yeah.